smart vehicle architecture is all about creating a scalable, flexible platform that we can build on. Continuous integration and continuous deployment are essentially referring to a connected tool chain in the software world. Continuous integration is about allowing the software changes we make to enable all this extra capability and testing it in an automated fashion, integrating it into our software repository. Continuous deployment is about making that code that has been tested and ensured it's robust and has the quality standards we require and making it available to customers. Those could be internal customers, they could be external customers. Now, when you combine both of these things, it allows us to deliver these features and functions to our OEM customers much more quickly, more reliably, and with better quality than we could in the past. A centralized system allows us to talk to one box versus many. That's important in a couple of ways. The first is around security. So when we think about all of the different um, boxes with different microprocessors that are in the vehicle today, if we update every one of them individually, then that means we have to have a doorway into each of them. And that doorway allows us to update it, but it's also a vulnerability. If we have a centralized compute function, then we're able to close those doors down, open it up to only one, make sure that it's the right data that's coming in, and then update all of the different boxes, the different features, functions, as necessary, depending on the OEM's uh, plans for scalability. Anything can be updated via OTA. And I love software, it's the great thing about software. We can do very nearly anything with it. But just because we can doesn't mean we should. And that's where these conversations with our OEM customers come into play. When we think about what should be updatable via OTA, we really think about experiences, functions, features that could benefit the end users. Think of something with respect to user experience, an infotainment system, for example. We could create more capability in those systems and deliver that to a vehicle that's already been launched via OTA. Another opportunity would be in the safety space. So if there have been advancements and different capabilities that have been added around advanced safety, we could deliver those in a secure fashion with OTA as well. We've been spending time talking about architecture and architecture is critically important when we think about OTA. On the hardware side for OTA, it's important that we have separate memory locations for the different types of software. So we can have our known good software in the first one and the new software in the second one. What that allows us to do is make sure that that new software is accurate, it's robust, that it's going to run in the appropriate way without having to eliminate the good software that we're using currently. So once we've done those robust checks, we can then move from the old software to the new software. But making sure that that hardware is architected in the right way and the software is architected in the right way allows us to deliver an automotive grade solution to our customers. The good news about OTA is that we can do it today. We've got our code architected, especially in the user experience side, to support OTA updates. Now it's all about taking those lessons learned and deploying them on the advanced safety space and creating those bite-sized pieces of software so that we can update them independently, delivering that new capability that our customers and their customers are looking for.